1971's Vladimir et Rosa is one of Jean-Luc Godard and Jean-Pierre Gorin's collaborations as part of the Ziga Vertov group. It has been described as an interpretation of the trial of the Chicago Eight, interwoven of Goddard and Gorin's opinions on what would constitute useful, practical, political cinema. Two pieces of context regarding the Ziga Vertov group, and then on the Chicago Eight. The Ziga Vertov group represents what is referred to as John Luke Goddard's radical period. Goddard and Gorin assembled several politically minded, Maoists, it has been suggested, individuals together in order to compose revolutionary films in the vein of the Russian revolutionaries. Naturally, they were named after the mighty Ziga Vertov, which in many ways defines their goals more than I, or even possibly they, ever could. This period of Goddard's work is considered to have lasted from 1968 until 1972, and made up nine different films, although 1970s until Victory slash Palestine Will Win appears to have been uncompleted. Its documentary subjects were apparently killed during production. And so now, onto the Chicago Eight. Abby Hoffman, Jerry Rubin, David Dellinger, Tom Hayden, Ray Davis, John Freunds, Lee Weiner, and Bobby Seale. All eight of these men were charged by the United States federal government with conspiracy and crossing state lines in order to incite a riot, a law passed in 1968, as well as other penalties associated with the anti-Vietnam War and general countercultural protests which culminated in the 1968 Democratic National Convention fiasco. All of, all of these events mostly taking place in Chicago, Illinois. A rather infamous trial in modern American history, the proceedings ended with all defendants charged with conspiracy, except for Bobby Seale. Seale's case was declared a mistrial. The evidence against him was slim. It's believed that he was used as a placeholder for, due to his involvement with the Black Panther Party, though Seale did wind up in prison for contempt of court anyway. You know, these other seven were acquitted of conspiracy by a jury, however five of them were convicted of crossing state lines with the intent to incite a riot. That convenient legislation. They were sentenced to five years in prison and fined $5,000 each. And now onto the film itself, Vladimir et Rosa. What does the title of this film refer to exactly? Goddard and Gorin portray two narrator characters named Vladimir and Rosa respectively. Vladimir is named after you know whom, and Rosa may refer to the title of a novel by Alfred Doblin. Our narrators discuss, amongst other things, the deeper meanings behind the charges brought against the legendary defendants and the general dissolution of countercultural radicals by state forces during the early 1970s. For anyone who wants a window into the radical zeitgeist of the early 1970s, or more precisely the lead-up to its essential dissolution, Vladimir et Rosa is an absolute blessing. This is one of the most unusually introspective of revolutionary-minded films. It engages in a seemingly playful, yet wholly serious, polemic on the status and efficiency of cinema as a useful political art. I am tremendously interested in the thoughts and musings of John luc Goddard at any given time. His relentless and externally enforced iconoclasm ensures he will always have interesting observations to share. Vladimir et Rosa is a fascinating picture and one of the more interesting political films of its era. The Ziga Vertov group era of, jo of Goddard's work is something I would like to explore more in this program because I feel it represents some of the most passionately firebrand of Goddard's entire catalogue. In some respects, I feel as though the 1970s was his most interesting decade during the 20th century. Obviously, that case can be made compared to the 1980s, certainly, and I'm not the biggest fanatic about the historist to cinema, and so as a result, I'm not the biggest devotee of Goddard's 1990s catalogue. I'm an enormous admirer of his 21st century work. And so that brings me to the 1960s. Why the 1970s over the 1960s? I certainly love Goddard's films throughout the later 1960s, although the 1960s, the early 1960s contained, especially prior to contempt, I'd say, generally speaking, these films were naive and conceited pictures about film culture, and almost a celebration of cinephile arrogance and self-importance rather than purely cinema. Films like Breathless, A Woman is a Woman, My Life to Live, The Little Soldier, and even the post-contempt A Band Apart are, frankly, bourgeois, and I cannot see past the grotesque contradictions in their passions to the extent that I can't help but feel that Goddard, forgive my gross arrogance, might actually agree nowadays. So anyway, Vladimir et Rosa, intriguing film, do try and view it if you're so inclined.